Good morning, beloved. This morning, our devotional is 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 to 3. The Word of God says, The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would add your blessing to this reading of your word. Now, Father, help us to hear and help us to, in every way, obey you in fear, in trembling, even in doubt. Help us to obey your word and obey your command. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, beloved, uh, to me, this is a wonderful illustration of, uh, of a point about uh, none of us is immune or uh, none of us uh, is above or beyond uh, both fear and doubt, uh, but the Lord will help us overcome it. Samuel, Let's, let's just take a step back and remember something that we covered weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Samuel, as a young child, uh, heard God call him. He didn't know who it was, but God spoke to him. And Samuel ministered for the Lord. Samuel worked for the Lord. Samuel had anointed a king. And now, uh, as God calls Samuel to go and anoint another king because Saul is going to have the kingdom taken from him, Samuel is afraid. Look with me. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. And it seems like a very straightforward proposition. Uh, th this is the king that, that God is putting in place. It'll be King David, as we um, you may know, but you will find out here very shortly that King uh, this is the anointing of King David. Uh, Samuel says, how can I? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. You see, he had been told by God. God spoke to him and told him what to do. And now his fear. And beloved, uh, understand, this is a, a remarkable, remarkable development for Samuel. Samuel is, is asking God, how can I do what you said for Saul will kill me? He's afraid. And he's not afraid to tell God. He has some doubt. He's talking to God, and he's not sure what to do. Beloved, sometimes uh, Christians uh, beat themselves up for not being perfect. Sometimes Christians berate themselves and, and, and just go about really in the, the worst possible way to themselves, not to even others. They, they uh, get down on themselves, and I've had situations where I've talked to Christians, and, and they are so down and so brokenhearted because they're not perfect. They've failed. They are, their faith was weak. They're, they're, uh, whatever the, the circumstances of their life. Let's remember Peter, as Peter denied Jesus uh, three times and then runs away and goes back to fishing. Jesus comes to him to restore him. Beloved, we are not perfect. We will have times where our faith is not as strong as it must be or should be. We'll have times where we doubt. We'll have times where we question. We'll have times where we don't immediately obey the command of God. Will we wrestle against our flesh and wrestle against the Spirit of God as we go back and forth. And we have to stop beating ourselves up because God provides a way. There is no temptation taking you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be uh, tempted above that you are able, but will the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10 tells us that God does not allow us to go beyond what we can. What does God say to Samuel? Does God yell at him? Tell him, you're not, no longer worthy of me? No, he provides a way for Samuel to obey. Take a heifer with you and say, I've come to sacrifice the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. 
God provides a way. Even in Samuel's weakness, even in his fear, even in his doubt, God does not reject him, but God says, this is what I want you to do. If Samuel continues to reject God, there's a big problem. But his momentary weakness is not an end to what Samuel has to do. God has a plan for you. And you may have been weak at one point, but God has not rejected you. Let's rejoice and come back and follow the Lord today. As he directs, I will follow. Thank you. May God bless you as you go about your day.